Uh, I'm basically going on a trip up the length of the country, uh, pr probably to Islamabad, maybe beyond to Peshawar, uh, doing graffiti uh, along the length of the country, um, just tackling the crisis that we face uh, with the standoff between uh, the Taliban and the armed forces and uh, this general collapse and anarchy that's uh, prevalent in the country right now. I feel like I can make my contribution to uh, the fray, in a sense, by uh, being critical of the violence that is, uh, has beset Pakistan. I hope that this trip can um, teach me about what's, uh, what, what's going on on the ground, in a sense, like uh, get a pulse of uh, what people are feeling across the country, as well as to contribute to that pulse. To, to hear the voices that are audible, as well as to make my own voice heard. Well, minarets are, the, uh, are basically a very important part of the architecture of a mosque. They're the place from which the call to prayer is announced, at least symbolically, even if not literally anymore. Um, they, so they're basically mosque property, and they, they also re resemble cigarettes. Um, so, you know, they're, they're kind of like that sort of shape. So I took something off a... Marlboro packet, which is a, a filter cigarettes, and they, they, they're on all sorts of cigarette packets, and just to turn that around into filter bigots. I think that religion is greatly given to bigotry, and um, it, it's that which needs to be eradicated. Like, I don't have a problem with religion being a source of some kind of spiritual sustenance or whatever anyone gets out of it. I'm not opposed to that, but just bigotry, like, that I'm opposed to. And 420 being fraud, like I, I think that in, in the name of religion and a lot of ideas are propounded that are not, uh, you know, that are not really justifiable if you look at, if, if you use humanity as a yardstick to, to measure your ethics, then you, a, a lot of what's done in, name, in the name of religion doesn't measure up. So I, I think that in that sense, I'm, I'm pointing a finger at religion as a fraud. 420, more commonly known, like in, in Urdu is char so beast basically, and it's, uh, a sh it's shorthand for fraud because it's in the penal code as, it's, it's, it's the code, it's the law for fraud. I thought of this idea that, you know, painting a red door black uh, from the Rolling Stones song, um, painted black. I see a red door and I want to paint it black. And I was like, no one's going to get that. We were reading the Urdu newspaper in the morning and it's just like, I, I felt like, you know, just as I'm held out by the the text, which, which which is really intimidating. I mean, I can read Urdu script, but with difficulty. I felt like that would be reversed in, in me trying to communicate anything to the people around me. We found a little shed uh, driving around Larkana uh, that was intended for it to house a generator, uh, power, uh, you know, ironically enough. And, um, so I painted a door of the would-be powerhouse red and then painted it morphing into a black door um, as, as a sign of mourning. I think black uh, is, is, has strong associations in, in the ritual complex of Muharram as well. I felt like the frustration with this whole thing mounting for me because I felt like, you know, the, these were circumstances so much larger than me that we were operating in with like millions of re refugees as well as you know just like the scale of the crisis was so huge that it made me feel that what I was doing was flippant and therefore it in a, in a big disjunct to 
what was going on and I also f I felt anxiety about it being lost not just in 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 the expanse of the space that uh, you know constitutes Pakistan and there's like this tiny little band of text in there somewhere but also in terms of being lost on the people who would encounter it basically we were in Larkana and what I was going through was like flashbacks to when uh, Benazir was assassinated which was a hu hugely emotional moment for me because especially because in the days prior to it during the emergency um, feeling that she was cutting deals with the military I had done graffiti that didn't quite oppose her but critiqued her modus operandi in that like I I'd, I'd plastered the number 420 on her posters um, when she died, of course, I was overwhelmed with guilt because naturally I didn't expect that to be the logical conclu conclusion of my critique. Like she was, and I've gone on the record saying this at the time as well, that she, she was really the only hope we had at the time to, uh, to rid ourselves of a dictatorial dispensation. We were in her hometown, all of these feelings welled up and then I went to her shrine as well, like her, her grave. Um, said a prayer for the martyr, for her and her father and her brothers. And um, painted uh, another slightly sort of tongue-in-cheek piece um, about martyrdom and about uh, about violence, really. The thing is that I'd left this thing a little bit open-ended so that I'd be able to react to the situation where I was and respond to whatever I feel wherever I am. So I kind of equipped myself to be able to cut stencils wherever I went and left myself open to the idea. Of course, finding a place logistically is hard to do that. So we sat ourselves in Colonel Sanders' Little Haven KFC and uh, made little scratches in there for my car, I suppose, as a byproduct of our, my, my political action of cutting stencils on the go. Of course, nobody there got it. No one there is anglophonic. Uh, but I think for me then it's more of a gesture than a need to communicate. For me, it's like the same as putting a wreath of flowers on her grave. Uh, religion or the, 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 their, their involvement in uh, with with the religious right wing, whether it's been Bhutto's appeasement uh, of the religious right or if it was Benazir's promise of opposition of them, landed them dead. And that's what I mean by kills kings. It's like religion kills kings, and it's it's a uh, it's it's taking from popular culture. In the 80s and 90s, there was an advertisement for Wales King cigarettes, always on for the taste alone. So I morphed it into for the waste alone, because a life wasted is uh, because because yeah, it, it is a wasted life, and any any life that's just taken for vengeance or political power or. Uh, to make some kind of point or to create terror is it's just a life wasted hame to ye cigarette ka ishtihar hi lag raha hai nahi ye cigarette ka ishtihar nahi hai ye kya cheez hai hame to itna maloom nahi hai lekin hum jo dekh rahe hain wo aapko bata rahe hain inko dekh isko mashhoor karne ke liye ek advertise hai aur ek aur baat hai logon mein ye shaur bhi paida karte hain taaki is brand ko piyo और देखो इसमें जो कमी है कंपनी को पता चले वो दूर की जाए कस्टमर को जो है 
परेशानी न हो स्किल्स के मतलब शहीदों के बारे में जो बुजुर्ग या किंग मतलब बादशाह बादशाह बाच्छ, को मार दिया अब क्या आपका ख्याल है इसके बारे में जिंदगी तो सही जाहिर है ज़ाया तो हुई है ना ये एक बड़ा वाक्य है आप लोगों ने पूरे दुनिया ने देखी है मीडिया ने देखा है ये एक बड़ी बात है खास करके हमारे लिए सिंध के लिए बड़ा नुकसान हुआ है Okay I'm not greatly given to ancestor worship and stuff like that so I'm I'm I don't really go to graves as such uh and uh, reading the Fatiha there which is what I did the Fatiha is like a prayer a canonical prayer that you say when you go to a grave site is something that I did more as a matter of form than as a matter of belief uh to show respect because that is the code for showing respect I went there to show respect I went there because I relate to the idea of martyrdom of course like I'm not dead yet so but the, uh I have a romance about the martyrs of the Bhutto family uh, as I have a romance about all other martyrs from Christ to Che Guevara to um whomever like you pull out from history who stood up against tyranny Hussein uh who who stood up against tyranny knowing that they may lose but still like stand up for what they believe and are ready to die for it in the morning when the papers came out um there was a news item about uh, karukari or honor killing um this kind of gender politics distresses me and disgusts me every time it appears in the papers and this was the most opportune time to um act on it i suppose since i was in the graffiti yatra and um i just uh, went out and i made a piece about this uh, group of menacing men attacking a woman who stands her ground and uh, creates another man also because it kind of tied into the whole way i feel about benazir being targeted as a woman politician by a very male military um and leaving behind this golden eyed boy for uh pakistan's uh, political prospects um after the peace on patriarchy we we uh, got in the car and left and uh, just as we were driving up i saw this like beautifully primed white wall with a black outline around it which was just asking to be graffitied on outside a mosque um it was it was basically the wall of a mosque and uh, so i took out my filter bigot stencil and started making a cigarette pack and um it evolved very very quickly into um a new brand of cigarettes for 20 kings destroying the connection between uh religion and fraud and the illusions that it creates and that kind of thing and its addictions and it, the bigotry and all of that um people got very curious about what was going on but their curiosity was uh creating a kind of tension in the in the crowd was palpable and so we just split before it got um really heated up and dangerous I'm I'm using cigarette ads to satirize religion because there are a lot of parallels. Um it's a scourge that's cancerous. It's eating society a lot like from within. Um it's addictive, it's romantic, it's debonair in some sense like just as cigarettes are debonair, religion is has a romance to it. And uh, it's destructive ultimately. Um I mean I don't mean to and in in to to complete the irony, I I'm a smoker and hence a hypocrite. in <laughs> doing this just as most religious bigots are preaching something else and practicing quite the opposite so uh 
eventually our journey took us to uh, Uch Sharif, uh, which I'd been insisting that we go to. And it's basically a shrine um, at, at a site that dates back to 500 BC. The shrine itself is, of course, more recent, um, but it's from the early period of Islam. Alexander the Great went through there. Muhammad bin Qasim, the first uh, Arab invader of South Asia, to supposedly bring Islam to uh, South Asia, went there. Um, so it's a very important site, um, and it, the legend has it that uh, the dates, the, the the seeds of the dates sown by uh, Muhammad bin Qasim are the palms, like the the uh, that that we see there today. So I just thought that I'd use one of the trees. I didn't use a date palm, but I, I used a smaller tree that was within sort of vantage of the the ruins of the shrines over there um, to try and kind of allude to how those seeds uh, are bearing very strange fruit, very bloody fruit, and how it's all kind of gone awry. Uh, religion of peace, Islam, literally translated means peace. Um, it has, has turned bloody. Great. <laughs>